because this week marks the five-year birthday of the drive. And even though a big part of the reason we made it to five years is that we seldom ever make it about ourselves, and certainly we don't really take ourselves all that seriously too often, for today, spare us a moment to reflect on the significance of this, because it is significant. This has become the most successful sports show in the history of the triad. That is true. What is the metric that you might care about the most in order to prove that? Longevity. This is the longest daily, longest running daily sports talk show in the history of the Piedmont triad. I'll never forget when I was looking to first take this job and a few people in the industry warned me about the last few shows that had started there didn't really last all that long. You're talking about six months here or there, a year, a year and a half, two years. It was hard to figure out because it's a large populous area. It's a great sports area. Greensboro, particularly a great sports town. Winston-Salem, a college town too. What couldn't people figure out? But the fact that we've made it five years when, as far as I could see, at least in a daily context, nobody's ever lasted more than two, two and a half, that is a big deal, especially given how volatile the sports industry has been, sports media industry has been over this period of time. You know, it's become countless times that we'd walk into the studio and be heartbroken that many of our colleagues had been laid off or would lose their jobs, not because of their inability, but because the industry can be really rough and it can prove to be a difficult place when management isn't where it needs to be. So really, the fact that we have lasted this long, it's a testament to terrific man and shout out to all of the folks you know who you are that have allowed for that to happen and it's a testament to you in the audience supporting it as well because all those folks in management they certainly see how this thing has grown and it doesn't grow unless it is supported by you watching or you listening and that is so greatly appreciated this might feel like WD, like inside baseball or like showing you like my drawers and my underpants here a little bit, let's, getting a let's little not, let's not too, do that. This might feel like this a bit, but like the recipe, I started thinking about it. Like people, when you get into, well, why is this show lasted longer than some of the others? Like, what's the recipe? What makes it different? It actually is a really simple recipe of what we've done. It's work hard and play the hits. Those are the two things. And the play the hits piece, I think, has been the biggest difference. Because I, five years ago, I remember I was on the job a week, going to ACC kickoff in Charlotte, ACC Media Day, grabbing some stuff before the show officially launched on the air. And one of the big things I wanted to do was pick the brains of people that knew the area well. Ed Harden, John Dell, Connor O'Neill, Wes Durham. And see... What are some things about this area that make it unique? What, what are some things that I need to accomplish? What are some things I need to do in order to be successful? And the legendary columnist, Ed Hardin, gave me advice that I've never forgotten. And he said, Josh, we get that Wake Forest is here in Winston-Salem. We get that you have the UNCGs of the world and North Carolina A&T. And we've got a lot here that's in the triad. But don't neglect talking about the Carolina Panthers. We get it. They're in Charlotte. There are a lot of Panther fans here. Don't neglect talking about North Carolina basketball, even though they're right down the road in Chapel Hill. Don't neglect talking about App State football, even though technically they're not in your listening radius. There are a lot of Mountaineer fans that live in Winston-Salem and live across the triad. So that's what we've done. We've tried to create a format where everybody feels like they have a piece of this. Everybody feels like that if you're a fan here in the triad, that there's some representation 
for what we're talking about. There's something that you are going to find interest in in what we talk about here. And I think that's something that we've accomplished. And in terms of hard work, it's actually measurable. Like nobody, I can say this confidently, no other sports host in the state goes to more games. No other duo, I should say, WD and I, go to more games than we do. No, nobody, I, I'd, I'd put our preparation up against anybody else's. I'd put our guest list up against anybody else's. And that, those are measurables for hard work. You know, I talent is subjective. You might like me, you might not. But Coach K is Coach K. Roy Williams is Roy Williams. You know, these types of guests. Matthew McConaughey is Matthew McConaughey. And that only I happens through go, Tarja. that only happens through hard work. And um, so I, I'm just very grateful today. And we're always going to be changing, evolving, and growing. Like early on, our focus was just finding an audience and finding a format. And once we did that. Then it was a focus on social media, and it was a focus in trying to continue growing from that point. Video has been a big piece of what we've been doing recently. So the show is never going to stagnate. The show is never going to remain the same forever. We're just going to keep evolving, keep getting better, and keep on growing. And we're very excited about where things are heading. So if you've been a longtime listener, we appreciate that. If you're listening for the first time today, I'm sorry for how self-indulgent the last few minutes have been. But we're going to get back to some old things that we used to do this week. I thought it would be fun to bring back some old segments that we do, um, that we've done over the last five years each day during the week. So if you are a longtime listener, that is something that I'm sure you will enjoy. 336-777-1600 if you want in on today's show. We are on Twitter at WSJS Radio. That's also where we're streaming video in addition to YouTube and on Twitch. Will Dalton is the executive producer of this show. He is one of four producers in this show's history and just recently became the second longest tenured producer in this show's history. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you, like, what am I up against here? Like, I... I'm I'm at like a year and I want to say almost four months. Yeah, you've got about six a, months to a year to chase down Robert. So I'm best coming, of luck. I'm coming, Robbie. First call of the week. Let's make it a good one. Dave and Clemens calling in. Dave, what do you have for me? What up, JG? Happy five years, homie. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And your support for years now. Yeah, I wanted to say, you know, I've I've been rocking with you from the beginning. I just wanted to give a little story about how much you, WD, this show means to me. Uh, I want to take you back to February 22nd earlier this year. It was a Wednesday. My wife was having a major surgery at Forsyth Hospital here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And uh, your show, Josh, helped get me through that day. It was a six-hour procedure in the waiting room I had on American Pickers. And I had you on and I called in that day and you were doing unusual questions with, uh, with, the, with Darren Vault. And I asked you about your water bottle and you've always let me participate in your show and play along. And I can't tell you how much that means to me, how much you helped me through a, a bad day like that. You helped me on my good days. This show means so much to this area. And uh, I can't thank you enough. And let's keep rocking for another five years. Yeah, no doubt. That's a very cool story. And you should know that it, it works both ways, too. This show has also gotten me through some tough days, too. Today included with the voice and all that. You know, I don't feel the greatest, but this is the highlight of my last few days. And it's something um, I look forward to. I remember vividly when my dad was in the hospital and in ICU uh, for a week, this show was a reprieve from that, where I could just have fun and talk about sports and not be thinking about that. So it works both ways. I'm glad it serves that purpose for you as well and for many listeners. Let's go to Mark in Greensboro, another OG caller. Mark, a fan, by the way, of the national championship UConn Huskies in basketball. Mark, what do you have for me? Hey, man, congratulations. Happy five years. Thank you. Um, I want to tell you that you're a good sport because you take a lot of, you know what, on Twitter and people call in and, you know, give you a little gruff here and there, but you're a good sport, man. And I, I always wanted to, I think you have a thick skin and you definitely have it. 
Uh, but I think that's what makes you a good a good host, man. I think you you know you give your opinions. You're not always right, but no one is. And uh, I think that's what that's why people have stuck with you is because of that kind of uh, awareness, right? A lot of people sometimes don't have that social awareness. So I wanted to tell you that, and I want to remind you that remember when I told you about a long time ago when. Steve Forbes was at East Tennessee State, uh-huh. and I, his name started coming up at Wake Forest. And I said, if you get him, he's going to be the best guest or one of the best guests you ever have. <laughs> and I was damn right. Yeah, you were 100% right on that. It's great. For those who don't know, behind the scenes, like Mark was a super UNCG fan of Wes Miller and company. Now I think a super fan of him at Cincinnati. A lot of folks still following him down the way. And he told me, oh, man following the SoCon closely when Steve Forbes was in the conversation for Wake, this guy's going to be the best guest that you have. And he's right. Like Steve Forbes is easily the most entertaining guest that we've had on. Well, or, you know, at least in terms of a regular basis, but WD in terms of like being a good sport on things, what have we always said is the most undefeated content on this show? It's when you're interrupted in some way. It's when the host gets upset. Bothered. Bothered. Yeah. Flustered. It doesn't matter how smart my sports take is. When the host gets bothered, that's always the undefeated content. That's right. Let's go to Wayne in Greensboro. Wayne, it's good to hear from you. What 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 are you what's on your mind today? Josh, I just wanted to congratulate you on a terrific five years. Uh your comments earlier were right on target. The thing that you, you know, I've been listening for decades in this market, and the thing you did that was different was expanding the the, the agenda on what you were going to get into. There are so many, you know, I'm an Appalachian grad, so I like to hear about that. Uh, you wouldn't think you'd do that. The other thing was... Uh, uh, too many of your previous predecessors uh, got too hung up on on being local. It's great to acknowledge local athletes, but if you spend too much time talking about the the, uh, the swimmer at Grimsley or the the new head coach in Thomasville, that's that's not the way to go. It's just there's not enough people that care. So you expanded things, and you talk about national issues and local issues, and you did the most important thing. You're always informative, and you're always entertaining. So thanks. No, that's very nice of you, Wayne. Uh, but I will, I won't push back, but I will add some clarity on the point of talking about things that are hyper local is the term that I would use. Obviously, we'd always want to stay local, but I always viewed talking about the Tar Heels and App State and the Panthers as being local. When you consider the Panthers, this is the second highest rated Panthers market in America, right? Even higher than Raleigh or, you know, parts of South Carolina. And so it would just make sense to talk Panthers, even though they're not specifically in this market or the North Carolina Tar Heels, how many Tar Heel fans that that are around here. But hyper local is the term I would use because when you get when you drill so deep in niche, when you talk about like a specific high school or something like that, well, we have reach all the way to Burlington and High Point and Greensboro and Winston, and you just don't ever want to isolate any large groups of people. So I'm glad that a lot of these strategies and things that we've talked about behind the scenes as you know goals of what we want to accomplish is something that has resonated with the West 